Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how you can insert fillable elements into your forms. Now I'm not going to show you how to create this form in this video. So I've created this form. If you want to know how to create this form then tune in on Thursday and I will show you how to create this entire form. But today I'm just going to show you how you can customize and place all the different elements you need for your user to be able to insert all these features, but it doesn't destroy the rest of your form. So the first thing you need to do is to have this developer tab at the top here. If you don't have that, then you just simply go up to Word, go to Preferences, go to Ribbon and Toolbar, and then on the right hand side here in Main Tabs, just scroll down and just click on your developer here and then click Save. I've already inserted it, so I'll just click cancel. And there you will see this developer tab at the top. Now in the developer tab, you'll have all of these different elements here and they give you lots of different options. So first of all, let's demonstrate the first one. So we've got this full name here. And if I place my cursor next to the entry, I can then place a couple of space bars and then I can go up to text box because we want somebody to put some text in here. So if I click on that, you can see we've got this gray box here. Now you can get rid of this shading if you want to, just click shading and it will disappear. But for now, we're just going to keep all the shading so we can see exactly where we've placed our boxes. Now, if I right click on this box, we can go down to properties and here we have some further customization tools. And this is quite important if you want people to only be able to type in a certain space area of your form. Otherwise people will continue to type and it will actually shift the form and move the cells and the borders. So if you want to just keep it all in this confined areas, you can actually restrict the maximum length of characters. So at the moment, as you can see, it's unlimited. But if we click on the up and down arrow here, you can see I can have one, two, and this is the amount of characters including spaces that you can insert in this area here. So if I just cancel that and I just click in this element here, let's just delete this, just select it and delete it. What you can do is you can just go along with your numbers and you can see how many characters you can actually fit in this space. So I've got 23 characters here and that's the maximum amount I want to give my user for their full name. So I go to text box, I right click on the grey area, go down to properties, in maximum length here, just select it and press 23. You can select a text format if you want to, uppercase, lowercase, title case, it's completely up to you. If we just put first capital and then we can simply click OK, then what it does mean is if I protect this form, which you'll have to do at the very end of creating your form, if I just protect it, if I try to click anywhere else on my form, I can't because now I've protected it, it will only allow me to select this text box. So if I select it and I begin to type, I'm continuing to type now and pressing my keyboard, but nothing is happening because it has restricted the amount of characters in that particular area. Now, if I was to take off the shading, you can see how that would look for your user. But again, I'm just gonna place that back on here. So before you place one of these text boxes into your cell, you do need to go along and decide on how many characters you'd like your user to use. Obviously to edit this form, we have to unprotect the form. So click on protect form again, and then you can get all of your editing options back up and you can continue to do that for the rest of the form. So it is a little bit of a faff deciding on how many characters you want, but if you want to make this quicker, now you've customized this one here, you can simply select it, go to the home tab, copy it, go to the next one and paste it. So this space is obviously bigger than this space here. So you know that this one isn't going to overrun this cell. Now you might say for date of birth, you just want to restrict it to eight characters or 10 characters, depending on the layout of your date of birth. But if you want it to be quick and easy, you can just simply paste it again with the phone number. This is a smaller space here. But if all phone numbers are generally the same, 
you can simply go back up to your developer tab, insert your text box, select it and right click, go to properties and because your telephone number let's say are 10 characters you can just insert that and click OK. And once again when you insert your telephone numbers they won't go on for more than 10 characters. Now for things like address up here you can leave it unlimited but do be aware that they could put in a rather long address and it may knock your table down like this and if it does that then maybe it will go on to a second page which perhaps is something you might not want. So once again, you have to figure out the amount of characters in this space. Now, when it comes to drop down menus, let's say for example, this question here, position applied for, we can just create two spaces once again, and this time we can go to combo box. Now a combo box also gives you a number of options. So let's right click on this box and click properties. And you can see we've got a different customization box here. So let's insert the options you might want on your drop down menu. So we could have human resources and then just click add. You can see it's now moved down to the drop down list. We can have IT, click add. And then what you need to decide is what is the title that's going to be seen when you open this form. So in here, you're not going to want a title of one of the jobs. You might want to have click here or job title. I normally insert click here because I think it's very obvious and then hit the add button. But you can see this title is at the bottom of my list. I need this one at the top of the list for it to appear as the title. So select it and then go to this up arrow here and just keep moving that click here right to the top of your menu as you can see here. Down at the bottom here you can just type in job choice just make sure it's one word and click OK. So now you can see how this is laid out click here so if I protect the form you can see this little arrow appears and if I click on that arrow you can see all your different options will appear. Somebody will just click on it, human resources, and you can see how it will appear. And once again, you can take off that shading. And if I just go over here, you can see that human resources has been inserted. So let's put the shading back on and protect the form. And then we can go down to this section here. Now you can see we've got these little boxes and these are the check boxes. So let me just delete this one and I'll show you how I inserted them. So once again, just go next to the text that you want. I've put in a couple of space bars and then just simply go up to checkbox and you can see those will appear. Again, you can copy and paste these if it makes a difference. And then again, if I protect the form, your user just then will click inside and click on the various ones and then just click on them again and it will uncheck those boxes. Again, take the shading off, the boxes just will appear white and you can see how that will look once that's been used. So once you've filled out your entire form with everything that you want in your box, I haven't finished all of this. So again here, I would need a checkbox. I can then click and drag across the text box. You can see it's turned it slightly blue. I can copy it, Command or Control C. I can paste it, Command or Control V and it makes it very easy for me and just create a space if I want to and so on and so forth. So once you've completed your form, don't forget you have the choice to take off the shading and then don't forget you need to protect your form by clicking protect form. Once you've done that, you, you can save it as a Word document and send it and your user will be able to insert all of their information without ruining or altering any of your form. So once again, if you want to learn how to actually create this form, do look at the following video where I'll show you how to create this from start to finish. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.